Can you believe how fast the decade has passed? That's right folks, we just burst through the tens, the second decade of the new millennium, and the future is as bright as it is long. We're gonna take a look back into the serious developments in tech, business, and personal finance that occurred in the teens, and we're also gonna peer into what the future holds. Buckle up, it's gonna be a wild ride. What's up, you guys? You're watching BTP Fusion. If this is your first time watching, I'm your host, Derek West. For all the rest of you, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to talk about the decade that was and the decade that will be. In human society, the teenage years are considered the formative years for most people. By this time, you've already gained the basic skills you're gonna to need to make it in society. You just have to figure out where your place is in it and refine and tweak what you know to become the best version of yourself in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And if you think about it, it was the same for the teenage years of this new century. The formative years of the early the formative years of the early 2000s set the stage, and the teens started to refine what that was and set us up for the 20s, 30s, and 40s and 50s. In the early 2000s, e-commerce stepped off the theoretical platform that it occupied and began delivering true value to large swaths of people. Life-changing value, as a matter of fact. In the early 2000s, convenient to your doorstep e-commerce services took their first baby steps. In the teens, it became a rebellious yet focused entity that many of us were in our teenage years. Companies like Amazon, Netflix, and Uber disrupted industries, turning mighty giants into toothless entities and leading the way to a better and brighter tomorrow. Amazon almost destroyed the big box store. In the 2000s, stores like Kohl's, JCPenney's, Kmart, Best Buy, etc. They were the giants of the industries with the rise of the shop and home experience, many customers no longer need to spend time in a department store to find the merchandise that they want and desire. Another example, Netflix could have been purchased for a million dollars by what was the most popular content distribution channel of the time, Blockbuster Video. The decision not to purchase the fledgling video provider, which at the time sent DVDs in the mail. How quaint. Did they still do that? Anyway, Blockbuster not purchasing them left them on their own to grow. And grow they did, until they became Blockbuster's main competitor and quickly surpassed them as the premier content distributor for video to consumer the world over. Eventually, Blockbuster Video would file for bankruptcy and have all of its assets liquidated, except for a store in Oregon, apparently, leaving behind only memories. Memories of renting videos on Saturday nights. I'm starting to date myself there. At the start of the 2010s, ride sharing was synonymous with taxi cabs, buses, and subways. In fact, in many places like New York City, Chicago, and other places, on the surface ride sharing, there was only one game in town, and that was the taxi. At that time, taxi cabs were relatively expensive and could only be afforded by relatively well-off New Yorkers, Chicagoans, etc. That situation repeated itself in many places across the globe. If you didn't have your car and you couldn't afford to ride a taxi frequently, you had to ride the bus or the subway. That was the only way to get to and from where you needed to go. Some folks were lucky enough to be next to a subway. And the luckiest had everything that they needed within a reasonable walk from all their subway stops. You know, work, home, play, chores, etc. That wasn't until Uber, Lyft, and others came along and disrupted all those industries. Studies show that Uber and similar ride-sharing companies have had not only an effect on taxi companies, but mass transit as a whole. Easily confirming what was a dirty secret for many years. People prefer riding in cars than to say riding on subways and buses. If you give them a cheap option, they will take it every time. In the 2000s, people assumed that the one thing that couldn't be disrupted by technology was real estate. Real estate had and has operated on much the same principles for hundreds, nay, thousands of years. But along came companies like Airbnb, who took the world by storm and turned what properties you had, even properties that you just rented, and turned them into money-making engines. And in the process, provided people from around the globe opportunities to rent and stay in properties that they heretofore never would have dreamed they could have stayed in. Those are just a few of the companies that changed the way the world worked in the 20 teens. I'm sure you understand that discussion on that could get quite extensive. And I'm sure you'd love to hear about it. If that's the case, pound that like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below. And we'll be sure to prioritize making that sort of video in an upcoming lineup. Let it be said that we here at BTP Fusion are responsive to the will of the people. The beginnings of the space economy were started in the teens. In the 20s, that economy is gonna take off and it's probably gonna 
heralded the coming of the universe's first trillionaire. Companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and other smaller players have laid the groundwork for private space exploration. Space has become a profitable venture for companies with communication needs, such as satellite and communication companies. And that is likely going to be a use case for space in the coming future, as companies launch satellites to provide low latency, high speed internet across the globe. If someone can provide high speed internet to everyone on the planet, that person could become a trillionaire. Now with those advancements, will also come the advancements of space exploration. In the coming decade, trips to and from the moon, and then Mars will take place. Mining of asteroids, at first by robots, and then perhaps by people, will also become commonplace, meaning rare earth minerals and other deposits will soon be more numerous than what was previously thought possible. Five G technology will take the next leap in communications and make what was seemingly impossible just 10 years ago seem commonplace. That sounds like so much hype, but the truth is that that may be an understatement. If you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s like me, FYI, I was born in the mid 80s and by the time I was six, the 90s were in full swing and I was a teenager as the 2000s began. So like 16 as 2000 began. Those of us that were born in the 80s remember some of the technology that was popular at the time and we can compare it with what we have today. And thinking about that, the difference is night and day. As an example, the very thought of a common person, a regular Joe, a person like you and me, being able to make a video telephone call was ludicrous. In the 90s, only the most prestigious government officials and corporate types would ever have the resources to do that economically. Contrast that with today. All you have to do is save up enough money to buy a smartphone and have a plan with enough data, or alternatively, be near a public Wi-Fi. Nowadays, I'm on video calls regularly daily sometimes. The improvement in technology is insane. I say all that to say, expect similar leaps and bounds that will be enabled by 5G. Things that were previously unthinkable, like autonomous self-driving vehicles, drone networks for delivery, true internet of things, and the improvements that could happen with said internet of things. With advancements in battery technology, electric cars will soon take over as the preferred mode of transportation for the average citizen. They allow a level of control that was not possible in traditional fossil fuel based engines and modes of transportation. I mentioned 5G a second ago, but you combine that technology with 5G and that will allow for the development of advanced autonomous vehicle networks. 5G technology will allow for true at scale autonomous vehicles. One of the problems of autonomous vehicles now are the vehicles that are not in the network and how they react to other vehicles. Imagine if your vehicle while driving itself is also in communication with every other vehicle that's driving itself in that network. And there is some service behind it that is coordinating and making sure that the vehicles in this network do not collide with each other. Well, if that is the case and this exists, then the vehicles in question can travel at faster speeds, much faster speeds as a matter of fact. Another thing that's gonna improve in the next decade Cheaper energy. The 5G technology that we talked about earlier, autonomous vehicles, all of that will be a mute point if we don't have cheap, clean energy. With more and more people rising out of poverty and standards of living going up and up and up across the globe, energy prices will naturally rise along with this rise in demand. That is unless new and alternative forms of fuel become popular and feasible at scale. Fossil fuels are abundant and cheap now, but at what cost to our environment? And as more people require energy, the rarer and more expensive said fossil fuels will become. Wind, solar, and geothermal are great on small scales and perhaps provide a way forward in the future, but can be scarce without adequate battery storage to hold on to the power when the demand isn't peaking and the generation engine is scarce. The sun is the engine of both wind and solar power, and when it's gone, you have very little of either. When I say gone, I mean behind the clouds or at night, as an example. But batteries are improving. See the comment on electric cars a little bit earlier. But for power generation slash storage at scale, batteries need to improve by several times, and by some estimates, exponentially. Nuclear power has the ability to generate tons of energy relatively cheaply, but the dangers of radiation leaks and other contamination makes it too risky to be worthwhile, right? Well, maybe not. And no, I'm not gonna go into a diatribe about the promise of fusion technology. Let me point you to a video from Questions with Joe on that. He did a pretty good write-up on like, why nuclear fusion has been the best promise for nuclear technology for the last 60 years. No, what I'm talking about is nuclear power plant designs that require and produce far less fissionable material, fissionable material, huh, 
produce far less fissionable material and are able to generate humanity's power needs for now and well into the future here on Earth and even in space. These include reactor designs like those for liquid fluoride thorium reactors, among others, that reduce radiation leak risks and things of that nature. Please take a look at uh, the links in the description below for a more in-depth discussion on that topic. And we might be dropping a video on that in the near future. Stay tuned. The one thing that's been true since the end of the last Great Recession in 2009 and for the entire decade is that the economy has been growing steadily at first and for the last four years or so more and more rapidly. Particularly in the United States, the U.S. economy has roared ahead despite dire recession predictions. That being said, signs are appearing that trouble could be around the corner. Signals such as the inverted yield curve are telling savvy investors that it may be time to pull their money out of the markets and other investments and put it under a mattress somewhere until all the dust settles. Other signals that a recession may be coming is that global growth has slowed down in some sectors and countries, and it looks like it might reach the U.S. at some point. As we all know, recessions are inevitable. When will the next recession in the U.S. hit? Is it right around the corner or is it years off? What will the new decade hold? Well, if you smash the like button and click the subscribe and notification bells, you know you will be getting the latest and greatest for all things tech, business, and personal finance. That we know for sure. Be sure to check out our videos on the top 20 ways to make money online in 2020, and also our videos on the, on the coming 2020 recession to make sure you're all caught up on the ways to make money in the new year and the new decade. Stay classy, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.